Welcome to our weekly forecast. My name is Jay Norris. I'm a trading instructor at Trading University. As always, we need to remind you that trading involves risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. We'll start out with the Australian US dollar. Aussie USD finally broke out to the upside, finally broke through the resistance we have seen here really for the last couple of months. Aussie is pretty interesting because last time we looked at this chart, you know, we took a, basically a static measurement of it uh, last weekend for, for the, the forecast and we, we could see the market was actually breaking out to the downside so you might anticipate a, a bit of a correction lower. I'm going to show you exactly what happened here and I'm going to show you a little trick that uh, well, professionals fully understand that you know there's your static analysis and then there's dynamic analysis and you know we operate we trade off of dynamic analysis for sure. Um, we'll stay in a position if, if the conditions are the same, if they're static, but we're always looking for that change in the market because that's, that's what makes markets move, right? New input, new information. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you a nice little trick here on how we see this happening. What happened right here was you had a little bit better than expected GDP number for Australia right there, and that shifted that five-day pattern bullish. I'm going to give you a quick lesson here. I'm going to highlight the last five days. I'm going to count back one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so see that those five days, I'm going to create a box there, high to low for those five days, okay? And I'm going to show you how we're going to highlight that five-day pattern, how we knew it shifted from being bearish to bullish. Okay, we've marked off the five-day box here. See, just one, two, three, four, five. On the fifth day, you're, you're well into the top third of that box. You're almost at the top of that box. That told us that that five-day pattern had shifted bullish. That told us even ahead of that, that GD or the, the great retail sales number they had. So when that five-day pattern, which is pretty influential for us, when that five-day pattern shifted bullish here by closing in the upper third, even you know the upper 20% upper of that box, that told us no doubt about it, the five day pattern had shifted bullish. So uh, something was shifting in that marketplace and you, you could see it even better when you, you draw a trend line on it right there too. So you had that uh, that 10 day trend line gave way, the five day pattern was shifting bullish. You knew you had a retail sales number and uh, that was a good number. So Powell, that really exaggerated, the, the, the bullish number really helped exaggerate the up move because that five day pattern had, had shifted ahead of time. So that was tipping traders off to be coming out of short positions. And that's what really, that's just gonna exaggerate the move too when you finally did get a, a pretty good number. So you did have pretty good numbers down under uh, this week. That retail sales numbers was a nice surprise. And, and GDP too came in a hair better than expected, but you know what, it wasn't worse than expected. So uh, relatively speaking, it was a good number for Australia. So Australian dollar coming to life. Um, he also shifted uh, your 50-day pattern higher also now. So you have a pattern of what? The, here's a higher high, another higher high. This became a higher low. Rather than a correction down towards the old low, you put in a higher low. So, you know, the Australian dollar is looking pretty good. So uh, we're, we're back interested in, in looking at buying dips in this guy and otherwise focusing on buy signals. Next market we'll take a look at is, is the dollar chief, the Swiss franc, that is, the dollar Swiss. You know, there, there's no way to look at this market, but but bearish, that's a, a new, well, I don't know, it's a two, two and a half year low, two and a half year low settlement. So, you know, no doubt about it, this is a pretty bearish market. You, you pan out to the weekly, and it looks to me like there's some room below. The only thing going for this guy on the upside, however, is that this is still a pretty good uptrend here. Okay, you take that... Uh, you take the 2011 low and really no matter how you cut it, uh, regardless of the, the angle of that, you know, that's an uptrend. So this market, uh, you know, it looks like it's in a position to move lower and start to probe for support. But I think there's plenty of room down below where you can, as a, a short-term trader, certainly uh, even an intermediate-term trader, you can you can probably press the downside a little bit in the Swiss. So we're definitely interested in selling rallies here, dollar Swiss. The dollar index it's a tough market to get comfortable on the short side because you can see every time you probe lower, it comes out of the hole quicker. When I look at this chart and, and I look back here, let's just put a box on the last five months or so, you know, it, it it's not even arguably, that's a sideways market. So, you know, you're in a sideways market uh, and I pan out to the weekly in an overall bull move, right? So, 
hard to get bearish on the dollar index here and we've said this all along if i like it at 81 i love it at 80 i really want uh, more of it at, at 79 etc so a lot of support down below you know all the way down to the old gan 625 line i would think you'll see good support here so yeah there's there's room below i guess you can look at the dollar index similar to the dollar swiss and that you know as a short-term trader you can work the short side even as an intermediate term trader you can work the short side but the long side you know the closer you get to to support down here at 79 and that long-term trend line and, and even on down into the 78 handle you know we see longer term support we see historic support at those levels so same story i guess um you can lay down on the short side but uh, don't don't fall asleep i don't think next market we're looking at is the euro us dollar and and likewise you know we just showed you that that sideways pattern that the 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 dollar's been trapped in for the past five months here's another one going all the way back to the fall of last year and again it's not even arguably you're in a sideways range it's just tough to get comfortable on the upside it, hard to think you're going to have a sustained up move when you have such powerful resistance potential resistance up at 140 pan out to a weekly chart and here's why we say that the primary pattern is still down take a look at our rtt ratio here that long-term primary is down everything else is up the only time primary pattern structure is relevant is when you get right on top of it so that long term happens to be down and and that's what we're seeing here uh you take that down move and you know you can retrace uh oh you know you can retrace uh, 60 65 even a little bit higher than that uh, more than that but overall the pattern is still going to be bearish unless you can get above 140 so that's our rtt level just below 140 so we think there's pretty big resistance pretty big potential resistance in this market and you know this is why all the big banks uh they're they're suggesting setting up shorts against these levels i think they got in a little too soon they're probably getting stopped out now well, all the better for us you know i mean the the more the merrier as far as the buy stops getting hit i, I don't mind that clear all those out and that puts the long-term market makers in a better position um uh to to make a market at these levels so you know nothing's changed for us long term we think you're getting into an excellent area to to potentially set up long-term shorts at the same time as a short-term trader as an intermediate term trader we're working the long side still next market the gold market gold's in an interesting place too you could see you're you're, you're knocking our you're not gold's knocking its head right on our rtt level uh, let me show you weekly and i'll show you why this level is significant for us this is your secondary move here the secondary pattern it's still bearish until you can eclipse this level so if you can eclipse 1360 or so get a little bit uh, i made 1355 if you can get beyond those levels give us give us a weekly close above it i'm all for buying a dip in gold then okay but if you can't if you can't close above those levels this is just another you know it's a, a smaller move it's just a short-term secondary pattern uh that that hit resistance from the little bit intermediate term and long-term patterns so that's all it is you know this is this is just a correction for now but if it can claw above that level get you know get up towards 1360 hold up there then i'll be interested in buying a dip in this market but for now i just see this is uh is a uh, um as a correction and this is your secondary down and this is your primary down so it's tough to get excited about gold unless it can prove itself at this level okay it's got to get beyond that level it's got to it's got to close on the highs it can't leave uh you know kind of a hanging man it can't leave that that shooting star there uh on the weekly it's got to show more conviction than that last market we're going to take a look at would be dollar yen you know we've been saying all along we like buying dips in dollar yen uh it didn't quite dip far enough for us i was hoping we'd get a shot at 101 it, it jumped up there and look at it knocked its head right on that 625 level right on that gan level you take that high and that low and boom and hit 625 625 is an interesting number because if you can if you can get above that number basically you shift this pattern from bearish to bullish okay you couldn't though i, I really think 104 if you got if you were to get a couple closes a close above 104 on a daily basis might do it might shift this pattern but for now this this big 50-day pattern is still bearish so um you know we were looking to buy dips but you know now it's a little high for that so i think we just do we need to be uh we need to exercise caution here but overall we're still buying dips in dollar yen thank you so much always a pleasure to do the report and we'll see you next time